Okay, I hope people can hear me because I can only talk as loudly as I can. Okay. <laughs> So come closer to the screen because I still don't have all my stuff together. I don't have my green screen. I tried out a new camera. It didn't work. So now I have to go and try and, and find another camera that is good for vlogging. These days, the new cam most of the cameras that they have, they are for the rich man's kids. They, you know, when you actually have a cameraman and I, I, I do all my filming and I actually like it that way. But anyway, welcome to the board of the Bantu. And before I open it, today we are doing Kate, Kate Middleton. I am um, usually the royal family doesn't take me too long to do. So we're going to do Kate Middleton. And then after Kate Middleton, we will do, I don't know, we'll do whoever. But anyway, Kate, my ancestor said she had cancer weeks before she said she had cancer. And when my ancestor said it, I didn't believe it. I laughed my heart out because I didn't believe it. Now, full disclosure, we're not really all that interested in uh, the health of the royal family. Okay? <laughs> These people are leaders of uh, genocide, the leaders of oppression. I mean, we're not that interested, okay? We, we're just not. But we are going to do her just because we saw that she had cancer, that she eventually said that she has cancer. We like Kate. Kate is a nice little racist who just, um, you know, who, who was playing her role. And two or three years ago, she was the happiest woman on earth. She's just given birth to her third child, the spare heir. And she was like, I can chill now. I can do what I want with my life. The pressure is off me. Only for her to um, get cancer. Let it be known that this young lady really loves her role as the future queen. She loved being Princess Kate. She was trained for it from birth. She was trained for it and she, she has done a great job. A great job, you know. Don't look at Kate and see a modern woman. Look at Kate and see the princesses whose movies we are watching now. Unfortunately for her, she got the family disease cancer like literally this is coming out to us as a family disease and bearing in mind that she and prince william are cousins um yeah okay so now i can open the board of the bantu do you know that most of the bantu eat the same foods <laughs> The same foods and made the same way, but with other names. What amazes me about being Bantu is that it doesn't matter where I will land. As long as the Bantu exists in that territory of Africa, I am going to eat pap. I am going to eat vegetables. I am going to eat meat all in one plate. Okay, it can be mixed. I think that uh, Zimbabweans do a lot of mixed uh, meat and vegetables, which I love. Or it can be three separate, one, two, threes. But I know I'm going to eat that. I know I'm going to eat that. And interestingly enough, I got a list of 40 something foods that I'm allergic to. And guess what? I'm not allergic to. I'm not allergic to pap. <laughs> I'm not allergic to pap. I'm not allergic to vegetables. I'm not allergic to meat. <laughs> if there's a real Bantu, it has to be me. So the similarities of the Bantu, they make everywhere home for every Bantu. The similarities of our cultures, our veneration of our ancestors, our food, and even our daily rituals, they make most of Africa home. And aren't we lucky? Aren't we lucky? We the Bantu, we've been through some shit. <laughs> We have been through slavery. We have been through colonization. We have been through medical genocide and real genocide on the ground. We have been hunted, physically hunted, with our heads being used as trophies. But we're still standing. And not only are we still standing, we're still holding onto our lands. And not only are we still holding onto our lands, we are still hating 
of the nylots, the Maasai. <laughs> We still don't like you. We don't remember why, <laughs> but we still don't like you. <laughs> so welcome to the board of the Batu. Welcome to my heart. Okay. And my name is Isabel, and I am your local witch doctor. And this board right here is run by the Costa. The Costa run this board. The Costa are about this life. The Tosa of the Western Cape of South Africa. This is their baby. Okay, African. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. So let's do King. Hey. 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 Now normally we don't read the sick you know that so we, we show a lot of compassion and a lot of kindness and a lot of love to to the energies that are struggling that are sick because we feel it's unfair to divert their energies when they need their energies to to heal but we're doing this reading out of revenge <laughs> Because you know, we don't think they cared when million when they were killing millions of us for no reason on our own land, when they were stealing from us for no reason on our own land. They were not caring, so why should we care? This is the statement my ancestors are saying, and this is the statement they are standing on. If it bothers you, please do not watch. Okay. Alrighty. So Katie. Yeah, people call her Katie. She fell, she, she struggled, she staggered into the plate, staggered, then fell to her knees. And she is in a fallen position where she is like this, you know, like bowed over. She's like on her knees. I wish I could do it for you. And maybe one day I'll just be showing you guys because I'm about to do that now. But, you know, she is hunched over on her knees in our plate. She didn't make it to the seat. Mm -hmm. Now, her energy is dark, dark, dark. They've been burning her. They've been burning her flesh. I mean, yeah, whatever they call it, they've been burning her. Her energy is dark, dark, but the, ooh. Kate has brain cancer. Yeah. It's in her brain. It may not be brain cancer. I mean, I don't know anything about and I hope I don't get to know. I hope I don't get to know. I've had too many relatives die of cancer, you know, but it's now in her brain. It's like in her brain. And that's the part they can't get to. They can't get to that part. It's in her brain, people. It's in her brain, right there, right there. Making it difficult for her to do everyday things. Everyday things are such a chore. Bow down to this woman when you see her standing, when you see her walking, when you see her laughing, when you see her talking, bow down to this woman because she is using the last of her human strength to do that. It's in her brain, like right here by the back of her brain. It could be a tumor, a tumor they are trying to reduce. I thought they said it was in her stomach. It's in the back of her brain and the tumor is, is making its way down her spine. Like it's killing her spine as it keeps on going. It's in her brain. Mm. We don't uh, like to predict death, even for our enemies, okay? We don't like to predict death. We will never predict death. But it's fatal. 
what she has, they are experimenting. They are trying to reduce the tumor, the tumor. You know, it's so funny how my ancestors always say, don't, don't believe what you read. And we don't want you to expose yourself to anything. We don't want you to expose yourself to, you know, reading and so on. And I don't, I don't listen. Right. I mean, I will read. Right. But sometimes they will hold, and I totally fell for it's in her stomach. It's not in her stomach, people. She didn't get stomach surgery. They took out a whole lot of organs from her, though. Like, because they are trying to not feed the cat. This is some kind of revolutionary way of treating cancer she's had it for 18 months it began to give her problems she's had it for 18 months it literally went undetected something about how it was there like the sign of it was there energetically when her son louis was born and she was told about it right it was there they have pulled out a lot of her organs one kidney her whole uterus you know the whole thing gone kidney gone little ducks 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 lymphoducts or whatever they are called hey i ain't no doctor little and you know i just watch sci-fi i i listen to scientists talk because i love listening to scientists talk such brilliant minds but i you know i i yeah ducks that's like they've taken out ducks 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 because they is a preventative measure so basic oh my god okay so basically this doctor is saying to me Nigel, hello Nigel. I I don't know if his name is Nigel, but I he's he, the energy is Nigel coming out here, right? Basically, Nigel, Sir Nigel, something he be an oncologist. He is like a very like respected or well known oncologist. His name is Nigel or Nugent or whatever. In in in. Okay, he is saying that. They are doing it as a preventative measure. So basically, they know where the tumor is going, where it's going to go down. Like it first starts here. They know the projection of the tumor and what it does. Like it's going to go here, then it's going to knock out your right kidney. Then it will not. So what they're trying to do is play with science. They're trying to remove her organs so that when you know if they can't hold it with chemotherapy which they won't be able to which they can't if they can't hold it with with chemotherapy you know when it goes down and it starts looking for that right kidney kidney not there when it starts looking for the uterus and the womb not there when it starts looking for those nefarious ducts that it likes to eat not there uh -huh. basically that's what they're doing all the way up to her hand her arm one of her arms they've taken out ducts so one of her arms is not quite mobile but they say it'll be mobile one of her arms they've taken out things so that you know when this thing gets there it's not there you know because they are saying that it doesn't the tumor doesn't eat the brain it eats the body. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Yeah. It eats the body. So, you know, they are just like, oh, good God. They're cutting this woman up. They are just cutting it. She's skinny enough as it is. They are just cutting her up. Oh, my God. This is inhuman. This is inhuman. Oh my God. And all for nothing. Okay. Okay. Talk to us. The doctor is doing the talking.
she says she can't talk it takes a lot of energy from her she says she's so sorry she is i think she's apologizing to my ancestors and that <laughs> what so what the word what <laughs> the 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 hostility she says she is so sorry she is so so sorry and the great class is asking her for what and she says for everything she says it's a dog eat dog world and so the great class says we are here to do business we are doing business so how are you how are you we must never lose our compassion see we must never lose our compassion even with the enemy because then we just become like the enemy so how are you this is a reading that the great cross like himself is doing hmm. okay so how are you she says she is fine as fine as she is going to get she wants to live to see her little boy grow out of childhood so we're asking which which one she says george he needs me he needs me she says do you understand that what is happening to me is the same as princess diana only her it was a car accident me it is this dreadful disease yeah i hadn't thought about it thank you she says it's a curse a curse in the family yeah but she yeah but, uh, she's she, she's kind of standoffish and kind of rude she, she said it's a curse i tell you okay so you feel like you're under a curse she says yes. Okay. Hey. Show me your life. Show me your life, Kate. Hey. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. <laughs> okay. Kate is at 50 50 right now as we talk. She is at 50 50. Them doctors are good. Nugent or Nigel or whoever he is, he is good. He is good. Good. Let us give him his props. And there is an energy right there staring right at me, talking to me. This woman was fierce. This woman was strong. This woman was is in charge of the ship. You know what I'm saying? She has a masculine energy. Can you believe that? Believe it. Believe it. Kate Middleton has a masculine energy. She has a very masculine energy. She's a very take charge. She's a very, this is what is going to happen. And this is what is going to happen. Okay. And she is the mother of her four babies. One, the girl, two, the little boy. He has some kind of uh, health issue. Little boy. Then, you know, her heart, her heart is her firstborn, George. She says, I told you, her heart is her firstborn. This is her husband, the prince. Okay, let me see if I can lower it a little bit. Okay, this is her husband, the prince, right? He is right here. He's in charge of this whole trajectory, but she is right here. She's about her babies. She's not about her husband. She is about her babies, especially this one. The other one, mm, he, he, we will never know about it, but he has some uh, heavy duty mental health issues. The youngest little boy, he has some heavy duty mental, she says, and she smiles, she says inbreeding. And I say, you got that right, sister. I was just about to say that. <laughs> I was just about to say it. I was just about to say inbreeding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but she said it herself. This woman has a sense of humor. This energy that is Kate has a sense of humor. She laughs a lot. Or she used to laugh a lot. The laughter is gone. Anyway, her husband is keeping her alive. Her husband is in charge of her medical treatments. And he ain't trying to hear anyone for any reason whatsoever. So if they say we're going to cut up her kidney, she will say cut it out. And then she, there is pretty much nothing she can do at this point. It's like the machine that is the royal family is making decisions for her. Do you think you will survive? 